Welcome again. In the last video, we learned how to use the linear discriminant analysis for classification. We studied the basic idea behind it and we looked at the equations and how to use them. We mentioned that it's often used for dimensionality reduction, but we want to use it as a binary classifier. Uh, remember that we're dealing with numerical data. If your data is categorical, then you can convert it into numerical using the techniques we explained in our data exploration and analysis tutorial. Now, let's take an example and see how things work. Let's assume that we received a data set from a bank regarding its small business clients who defaulted, which are represented here by red squares, and those who did not default, which we represent by uh, uh, blue circles. Uh, these are separated by delinquent days and the number of months in business. So we have two variables now, or two features, or two attributes, or two uh, predictors, which are delinquent days and B usage, which is the number of business. What we want to do is, we want to use LDA to find an optimal linear model that best separates the two classes, i.e. to separate them into default and non-default, or yes and no. Now, uh, the data looks like this, provided by Professor Said. Don't worry about these calculations. The data originally has only three columns, B usage, days delk, and default. So these are the two variables, or the two attributes, or the two predictors, and default is the class either no or yes. We have 100 instances, 75 of them belong to class no, 25 of them belong to class yes. These calculations you can uh, do in, in, in your own time to do this computation, find the, uh, the, uh, uh, the logs and things like that. You can use your um, Microsoft Excel if you want. I use OpenOffice Calc. Now, let's use this data now, extract the necessary statistics and plug them into the equations to find the vector of coefficients. Now, what we do is, the first step is to separate the data into two classes, yes and no, into two subsets. So, one subset for the no class, other subset for the yes class. So, the first one will have 75 instances, the second one will have 25 instances. And then, as you see here, the no class number of count, number of instances is 75. Probability now is 75 over 100, which is 0.75. This is for the first class. For the second class, probability is 25 over 100, which is 0.25. We find the mean vector, i.e. the mean for the first variable and the second variable, so that should be a vector, a vector as you can see, and we find the covariance matrix for the first subset, 2 by 2 matrix. We do the same thing for the second subset, for the yes class, the mean vector, the mean of the first variable and second variable, so that's a vector of two values, and the covariance matrix. After extracting these statistics, what we do is, we calculate the pooled covariance matrix according to this equation. We've seen this before in the last video. Uh, the pooled covariance matrix is 1 over n1 plus n2. n1 n2 are the counts, the number of instances in both subsets. c1, c2 are the covariance matrices for the first class and for the second class respectively. We plug the values in and we end up with this 2 by 2 matrix for the pooled covariance. Now, again from the last video, we said that the formula to find the vector of coefficients is c minus 1 times mu 1 minus mu 2. c minus 1 is the inverse of the pooled covariance matrix and mu 1 is the um, the mu 1 is the uh, um, the mean vector of, for, for the first group mu 2 is the mean vector for the second group. We plug all the, these values in and we find that the better vector now of the coefficients looks like this with two values because we have two variables. And then we just now plug it in the, in the formula for z for the straight line that we're looking for, and it looks like this. z equals 0 0.0095 times usage minus 0 0.1408 times day select or the delinquent days. These two values are negative, as you can see here. Now, let's assume that we have a new point. Maybe it has b usage 111 and day select 24. This is what the vector looks like now, a new point with two values and we want to check whether it belongs to the yes class or to the no class. What we do is, we just plug it in. Uh, remember now, the first class is no, the second class, so C1 is no, C2 is yes. What we do is, we plug that vector into here, into this equation here, and we check whether it's larger than 
or not larger than uh, the log of probability of class 1 over cl probability of class 2 or not. If it's larger than that, then it belongs to the first class, which is no. If not, if it's less than or equal, then it belongs to the second class, which is yes. So this is the uh, transpose of the coefficient vector, which is this one here. So it becomes a column vector rather than a row vector because we need to use the transpose. X now is this vector here, the input vector or the data vector. Mu1, mu2, we've see, we, we mentioned that it's this vector and this vector for the means, for the two group, I'm sorry. And probability of class 1.75, probability of class 2.25. Now what I've done is I I know my handwriting is disastrous, but I've just pl uh, but I've just plugged the values in here for you so you can see them. This is the transpose of the uh, coefficient vector, the beta vector. This is our input vector, 11124, and this is the first uh, mean vector. This is the second mean vector, and we check. I know you. Li I know you like that uh, question mark. <laughs> we, here we check whether that value is larger than log of probability of the first class over the probability of the second class. I leave it to you now to use your to use your calculator to check whether the new point, this point here, belongs to the no class or to the yes class according to this and this. The last thing here is we can compute the Mahalanobis distance, delta square equals uh, the transpose of the beta vector times mu1 minus mu2. We just plug the values in as we mentioned before, so it's actually this vector now, this is the transpose of the beta vector and this here. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not because this is mu1 minus mu2. So we just plug this vector, this vector and this vector. We need to subtract rather than uh, uh, add and we, get, we end up with delta square 5.40. Take the square root, the delta now, the Mahalanobis distance is 2.32. What that means is that that's th that that distance shows a small overlap between the two groups, which means a good so separation between classes by a linear model. There is a small overlap, and just to check it vi visually, you see that there is some overlap between the red um, uh, squares and the blue circles. So the data here is non-linearly separable, but that is the best we can get using the LDA technique. Thanks very much for watching. I'm going to stop here and I'll see you next time.